Here you see me and my first officer during an engine start and push back. Due to tailwind, we start engine number one first before the GPU is disconnected and we commence the pushback. When NP, the propeller speed, is stabilized at 70.8%, the first officer performs the usual flow. Probe hitting on, windshield hitting on, ice test, anti-skid test, flap 15, flight director set. Did you notice that? The first officer pushed one button too many. Do you know which one? Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm a captain instructor on ATR aircraft. I have a question to all of you flying the 600. Have you ever experienced that the takeoff speeds have disappeared before takeoff? It has happened to me, and I didn't know why, until now. A couple of weeks ago, I did my recurrent training at ATR Training Center in Toulouse. I like simulated training because I always learn something new. During the engine start procedure, we did the ice detector test as usual. The instructor raised an eyebrow and told us that is not the correct procedure. But the ice detector has a test push button, so it makes perfectly sense to test it, right? No, the ice detector is running a continuous self-test and will tell you when it's not working. Furthermore, the normal procedure is not to test the ice detector. Check your FCOM and see for yourself. Still, I was still convinced that it should be tested. So I must have learned it in my early years as an ATR pilot. I started to fly the ATR 20 years ago. And I have ATR manuals dated back to 2008 and they all tell the same. The ice detector is not tested. But new ATR pilots are still learning to do the test from old instructors like me. Mm, well, I just stopped doing that. Okay, so you're not supposed to test the ice detector. But the button is there, right? So why not do the test? When you fly an aircraft with airfish cockpit, it really doesn't matter. But when you fly with a glass cockpit, that little button has the potential to ruin your day. And now I'm going to tell you why. For those of you who are not familiar with the ATR 600 variant, I will first explain how the takeoff speeds are defined and displayed on the airspeed indicator. It might sound strange that this is related to the ice detector, but the avionics in the 600 are integrated more than most of us can imagine, at least me. There are thousands of thousands of lines of code, and somewhere in there, there is a little strange bug. We can call it that. Before takeoff, we calculate the takeoff speeds, V1, V R, V2, based on aircraft weight and current conditions. In an FS cockpit, the takeoff speeds are marked with colored bugs on the airspeed indicator. In a glass cockpit, it is the FMS the flight management system that computes the takeoff speeds. All we have to do is to enter the weight of the aircraft into the FMS and it calculates the takeoff speeds. Those speeds are NL or non-limiting speeds. If the runway is performance limiting, for example you have tailwind, short runway, slippery runway, etc. You need the optimum speeds for the current conditions. 
To calculate those speeds, we use a software called SPS, Single Point Performance Software. Those speeds will have to be inserted manually into the FMS. When the correct takeoff speeds are defined and set, we open a performance page on the MFD and select Confirm Takeoff Data. This action defines the speedbergs on the airspeed indicator. But here is the catch. If you have inserted and confirmed manual speeds, and they are less than minimum takeoff speeds in icing conditions, and you then test the ice detector, the FMS thinks the speeds are too low for icing conditions, and the following will happen. The manual takeoff speeds are replaced with non-limiting speeds. The takeoff speeds are unconfirmed because they are changed. And the speedbergs will disappear. If the manual takeoff speeds are equal to or higher than minimum icing speeds, nothing will happen. But if the manual takeoff speeds are less than minimum icing speeds and you press ice test, your takeoff speeds are lost. If you don't notice this before you take off, you will get a nasty surprise. What if an engine fails? So, how can we prevent this? First of all, don't test the ice detector. This is not a procedure, okay? Then you can check the following. One, the speeds on the FMA. You shall see V1 and V2 plus 5 as you have briefed. Two, the speeds on the MCDU. Manual or not, they shall be as you have briefed. Remember, ATR recommends pilot flying to have the takeoff page active. And it's indeed a very good recommendation. And three, check the pitch trim indicator. When you see the magenta bug, it means that the takeoff speeds are confirmed. If you don't see the magenta bug, don't take off, but check your settings. I hope you got the point. So from now on, don't push that button. It's not a procedure, and now you have a very good reason for not doing it. If your company wants more information, you can contact ATR Ops Support. They are very helpful. Okay, that's all I have for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.